Hi guys and welcome back and today we'll get stuck into the Panzer Kampfwagen 2 Ust FG a 135th scale kit by Tamiya comes with all the normal box art some different kits on the side which is stock standard item number 35009 asterisk 1200 this is an old kit 1971 in the original copyright that makes it pretty old. So let's have a quick look in the box and all the sprues are in one plastic package. Then we have the lower hull, the upper hull, and the old rubber band track, so two of those of course. Then we've got a long fold out set of instructions. This one's in Japanese. It's just got some information about the vehicle and then the actual instructions themselves, which effectively only has five steps. Some pictures there. We've got the how to apply decals information sheet and some different options uh, for markings there. A little tech tips handout, which I've never seen before. And the English version of the instructions. So let's look at the paperwork. We've got the blurb about the vehicles, some unit organisational information, uh, some marking information for helmets and unit badges and the like, some information about ranks and shoulder tabs, and then into the instructions. So first stage is uh, getting the lower hull together. Stage two, whacking the wheels together and putting them on. The turret. Construction is the third stage. Upper hull is the fourth stage. And basically the tracks and then putting it all into one cohesive thing is stage five. Uh, instructions on the figures. I'm not going to use any of the figures in the diorama, but always helpful to have some extra figure parts lying around. Some painting and decal instructions. I think there's six different variations available here. I'll just be doing the boring stock standard Panzer Grey. So let's have a look at the plastic and bear in mind the moulds are back from 1971. It looks in pretty good shape to me, not much in the way of flash, not a huge amount of detail, but what there is is pretty clean and it looks very nice and here's a legacy to its uh, past history when it used to be motorized with a couple of batteries so i guess it's the case of is it the best panzer II kit going around the countryside and, and the answer to that would probably be no it's not but is it the best kit for what i need to do with this diorama and the answer is yes it is because its price point is really good i think it was only about 25 bucks delivered which was quite good and it's simple enough for me to make because I'm ultimately going to have it as a reasonably damaged and burnt out vehicle. So I don't really want to spend 50 or $60 on a, on a kit to then go ahead and destroy it. There's something that doesn't work in my mind when I think about stuff like that. So doing it to a $20 kit, I'm fine with that. So that's the, that's the philosophy behind going with this for the first encounter Dio. As you've seen while I've been rabbiting on, the molding is quite crisp. There's very little flash at all. And yeah, I think it ticks all the boxes as far as a typical Tamiya kit. I love those tropical helmets. I definitely have some thoughts for using them in the future on something else. You've got the old poly caps, which are always great. The rubber band tracks, which I don't have an issue with at all. I think they're, they are what they are. And um, if you understand that, then they work fine. There's plenty of ways to jazz them up with a bit of paint and weathering and uh, other bits of mud and whatever. Decals, clear, crisp, uh, again, as you would expect. And just a trick here for straightening out the rubber band tracks, I just pinned them to my cork board uh, and left them for a few days, and they were as straight as a die. And given that there was such a low part count, I thought I'd do something a little bit different to what I would normally do, and I got all the parts off the sprue and cleaned them up and had them all ready to rock and roll. 
which meant the actual construction stage, I, I think I put it together in under half an hour. So on with the gluing, and look, it was very, very straightforward. There are a couple of tiny little fit issues, but nothing very horrifying. And by and large, it all just pretty much fell together, as you know, the cliché, as you would expect a Tamiya kit to fall together, even one as old as this. So I'll just pipe up intermittently where something interesting happens. Otherwise, there'll be a bit of gentle music in the background. I drilled out the end of the exhaust pipe just so it didn't look uh, odd. So on to step two, pretty straightforward, just getting the little rubber things in the holes, otherwise known as polycaps. Minor issue with this, which I thought wasn't right at the time, it just didn't feel like the hubcap uh, was, was fitting properly. Uh, I can sort of force it down, but uh, we'll discover later on that that wasn't uh, quite satisfactory. Sometimes your polycap needs a little bit of encouragement. I guess you want a snug fit. So I'd push this on and it just poked the uh, little hubcap right off the end and I thought well, that was a bit odd. I knew it wasn't fitting properly, and then I realised when I tried to glue it back on that the actual stick was just a tad too long. So I took the sanding stick to the stick and probably took off a tenth of a mil. It wasn't very much at all. Made sure the old polycap was in the firm spot that it could be. Bit of glue around the edge of the plastic, avoiding the polycap, and then perfect. Zero problems getting the rest of the wheels on, they all went uh, very smoothly. Making sure everything's lined up, no wonky wheels. Working the return rollers in.
So I started off step three by drilling out the gun barrel and the MG barrel, which you can see the uh, MG barrel happening here very carefully. And the reason I'm showing so much of this is that um, I have to admit it's all I've got to show of the turret construction. At this point work interrupted my busy modelling session and uh, I forgot to turn the camera off and when I came back I didn't realise it was dead, I just pushed the record button and uh, it didn't record anything so I missed the rest of the turret but trust me it was very simple. Step four is the upper hull, and again, no cause for complaints, everything fitted very nicely. So in contemplating this, I, I was torn between sticking everything on, and um, well, there I realised I hadn't uh, cleaned the sprue gate connections there, that was a bit slack. Yes, I was torn between sticking everything on, or Free doing some of the damage and not sticking bits on that would be damaged. But in the in the final sort of assessment, I thought, now look, I'm get, I'll put everything on, and in fact, I'll I'll put everything on and I'll make it, paint it, decal it, and finish it as if I wanted to have it as a perfect tank. So you get to see that full journey, and then we'll have a fun video where we then demolish it in part to reflect the battle damage and uh, whack in a couple of the, what I hope to be cool additions with uh, the smoke machine and the LED lights to simulate the fire. And as I said before, having pre-cut all the parts and probably spent half an hour or 40 minutes getting them off the sprue and cleaning them up, a little bit of fine sanding and what have you, um, it was literally less than 30 minutes to glue it all together. Just, it just flew, which was great because I could do little sections in between other things and let it sit and, and, and dry, so it worked really well. Now the old rubber band tracks are pre-glue uh, consistency, so it just requires carefully heating up a flat metal surface with some flame and then effectively melting the pins down. And again, you, know, you need to be careful, you don't want to destroy the tracks, but you're also mindful of the fact that you can hide them in a multiplicity of ways when it's actually on the model. You can have it down the bottom so it's on the road, a bit of mud, and um, no one will ever know. Getting the tracks on relatively simple, I just whack them over the drive sprocket without the other wheel at the end in place, and then you can just sort of lever that in and stretch the rubber band tracks in doing so until you... That's what one of the things I like about polycaps is that makes that process very, very easy. So we'll have a look at a couple of picks at it all built up and uh, then come back with a little bit of priming and undercoating and we'll be done.
So I'm with the priming and giving it the black Vallejo primer and putting it everywhere inside and out. And that's because when the damage eventually takes place, I don't want any yellow showing through uh, some of the puncture marks that uh, are likely to be there or the explosion marks that are there. So giving it a nice thick coat, putting it on pretty wet and uh, just leaving it uh, for an hour or two. I think I left it for about two hours before I came back and had another crack at it. But uh, yeah, just wanted it to be nice and robust with the view that I'll do some weathering on that and chipping, so rubbing off some of the coats in between. And then giving an undercoat of the MIG acrylic colours. This is 8012 Rotbron. And uh, that's just to, again, give something to poke out from underneath the Panzer Grey, or the dark Panzer Grey that I'll put on as the actual paint coat as part of the damage that's being inflicted on the tank when it's been brewed up. And so that's it. Let's have a whiz around the magic spinning wheel for a couple of laps. Fabulous little kit to put together. I mean, really, really easy. And based on that, I'd thoroughly recommend it. If you're watching and you're contemplating, oh, you know, I really might like to get back into modeling. I, I really wouldn't mind having a crack at it. This Tamiya Panzer II would be the perfect kit. It's very easy to put together, but when it's finished, I expect it will look really, really nice. And um, for my purposes, an uh, inexpensive addition to the diorama that uh, I won't feel guilty about damaging it. I remember when I built the Sherman for the Castle Itter diorama, the Besotten Jenny, I actually couldn't bring myself to damage it, even though it technically should have had damage to it because I just liked how it looked too much as it was. So anyway, uh, a few photos following the spin around and uh, then I'll come back and say goodbye. So thank you all very much for watching, I appreciate it greatly and look forward to your comments and uh, any questions or the like. Like if you liked, sub all the normal YouTube stuff, click the bell, ding my dong, all that sort of rubbish. And I am got my tail up about the Haladonian first encounter diorama, so all the stuff that I now need has turned up, so I'll crack on with uh, painting the Panzer II, and hopefully that will also include the additional inclusion of the smoke generator and the flickering lead lights, which will be good. And then I think I will have the two tanks, so I'll be able to get the sense of the dimensions of the diorama from those, and that'll mean jumping into the mini art buildings and probably doing some scratch building of buildings to augment that as well. So I think it'll actually end up being a much bigger footprint than I originally envisaged, but hopefully it will, uh, it will come out and look pretty good. That's it. Take care, everyone. Keep safe, keep well, and I will catch you in the next one.